Uh, well, I'm going to start out with a, an original song, but I'm going to do some of our old favorite um, patriotic songs just because it's the 4th of July. And uh, some of you may not know this, but I am a music therapist, but I hadn't done any music therapy lately. And I've missed playing at the nursing homes and stuff like that. And this is some of the material that I used to play for my patriotic program, which would be 4th of July, Flag Day, maybe Memorial Day, or um, Veterans Day. <clears throat> so, here's my song. At each rising of the sun, I'm thankful for each one of the heroes that shield my home from harm founded on a trust in our god to care for us our usa will rise against September the 7th, 1774, a group of visionary revolutionaries gather for the First Continental Congress. And this excerpt is from the convocational prayer from that meeting. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, look down in mercy, we beseech Thee, on these our American states who have fled to Thee from the rod of oppression and thrown themselves on thy gracious protection desiring to be henceforth dependent on thee Filled by people who 
see freedom as their only destiny. The greatest nation ever known, America, my blessed home. My country tis of thee sweet land of liberty of thee i sing land where my fathers died land of the pilgrim's pride from every So although we know that Reverend Samuel Francis Smith wrote the words to my country, Tis of Thee, um, also known as America, the origins of the song's melody remains a mystery. It's been used as the melody for God Save the King since the 1700s and has been also used as a tune for many other national anthems. The, this tune was used at Washington's inaugural ceremony with different lyrics and has and then became our national anthem for a while so i i uh, love these patriotic songs and uh, so i thought i'd look up you know just little tidbits of the, here and there about some of these songs so that we could know about them uh, and it's kind of fun a little history i'm a history buff so the next song is from 1906, the stage musical George Washington, Jr. Uh, the original lyric uh, for this George M. Cohen favorite uh, is from an encounter he had with a Civil War veteran and, um, who fought at Gettysburg. The two men found themselves next to each other, and Cohen noticed that the vet held a carefully folded but ragged old flag. The man reportedly then turned to Cohen and said, she's a grand old rag. Cohen thought that was a great line and originally named his tune, you're a grand old rag. So many groups and individuals objected to the calling of the flag a rag, however, uh, that gave him, uh, that he gave them what they wanted and switched the words, uh, renaming the song to guess what? You're a grand old flag. You're a grand old flag. You're a high flying flag. And forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true neath the red, white, and blue, where there's never star bread should old acquaintance be forgot keep your eye on the grand old flag <laughs> so uh, this next song is currently our national anthem and uh, on September the 14th 1814 Francis Scott Key pens a poem, which is later set to music, and in 1931 becomes America's national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner poem, originally titled The Defense of Fort McHenry, was written after Key witnessed Maryland, the Maryland fort, being bombed by British during the War of 1812. Key was inspired by the sight of a lone U.S. flag still flying over Fort McHenry at daybreak, as reflected in the now famous words of the Star Spangled Banner and the rocket shred glare and the bombs bursting through air, through, in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Key was a successful lawyer in Maryland and Washington, D.C., and was later Attorney General for the District of Columbia. On June 18, 1812, America declared war on Great Britain. 
after a series of trade disagreements. In August 1814, British troops invaded Washington, D.C. and burned our White House, our Capitol building, and the Library of Congress. Oh, all those songs. Their next target was Baltimore. After one of Key's friends was taken prisoner by the British, Key went to Baltimore, located the ship where his friend was being held, and negotiated his release. However, Key and his friend weren't allowed to leave until after the British bombardment of Fort Hen McHenry. Key watched the bombing campaign unfold from aboard a ship located about eight miles away. After a day, the British were unable to destroy the fort and gave up. Key was relieved to see the American flag still flying over Fort McHenry and uh, quickly penned a few lines in tribute to what he had witnessed. The poem was printed in newspapers and eventually set to music uh, to a popular English drinking tune. Uh, people began referring to the song as the Star Spangled Banner and in 1916, President Woodrow Wilson announced that it should be played at all official events. It was adopted as the national anthem on March 3rd, 1931. So, and I forgot to mention that if you guys want to sing along with me, if you're on Zoom, just mute your mics because there's a delay there. And uh, if you're on Facebook watching party, please feel free to sing along. These are sing along songs. stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in there gave proof So the musical hope for peace originated during the Civil War, this next song, and, and has demonstrated the lasting appeal and growing in pop popularity over the years. Soldiers and civilians both have uh, both sides. Oh, wait a minute. I'm going to back up because I got out of order here. Oh. Okay, so this next song that I'm going to do, and you see the flag behind me is uh, an old worn flag, and um, I would often do uh, flag burning ceremonies. When the flag gets told old and worn and it's a rag, as we talked about, then there's a ceremony that you take your flag and it gets cut up and burned, and that's the proper way to dispose of our American flag. Uh, so for this ceremony that I do every year, uh, Bobby and I wrote this song called Old Worn Glory. You've sent me out to foreign shores all around the world, an ambassador of goodwill. With the stars and stripes unfurled The message and my mission is That everyone lives free But with a stern forewarning I say Don't tread on me Oh, 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 old and worn Oh, 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 oh dirty and torn you 
you in the battle and was proud to lead the way for our brave young soldiers who vowed to keep us safe. I draped the silent heroes who rallied to freedom's call and then consoled the loved ones left behind. auspicious day I'm proud to be bear the honor you bestowed God bless This song is from the Civil War, and um, soldiers and civilians both, on both sides of the conflict, sang it, identifying with the feeling of joy they thought would come with the end of the fighting and the return home to their loved ones. Uh, the first printed sheet music for this song credits the words and music to Lewis Lambert, which was determined later to be a pen name for Patrick S. Gilmore. Born in Ireland, Gilmore was... A, uh, came to America in the 1840s as an immigrant, along with many others who fled the famine of those years. He was a gifted musician, becoming bandmaster for the United States Army during the Civil War. Gilmore claimed to have learned the tune from When Johnny Comes Marching Home from an unidentified African-American singer and that it was a traditional African melody. Johnny comes marching home again, hoorah, hoorah. We'll give him a hearty welcome then, hoorah, hoorah. The men will cheer, the boys will shout, the ladies, they will all turn out, and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. The old church bell will fill with joy, hoorah, hoorah. To welcome home our darling boy, hoorah, hoorah. The men will shout, the, the village lads and lass will say, with roses they will strew their way, and they'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. Get ready for the jubilee, hoorah, hoorah. We'll give the heroes three times three, hoorah, hoorah. The laurel wreath is ready now to place upon his loyal brow. And we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. So this next song is, um, was based on a poem written by a professor, poet, and writer, Catherine Lee Bates, during an 1893 trip to Colorado Springs, Colorado. 
she got uh, to the top of Pike's Peak, and the view was so beautiful that it inspired her to write, all the wonders of America seemed displayed there with seas, sea-like expanse. The poem Bates wrote first appeared in print uh, in the Congregationalist, a weekly journal on July the 4th, 1895. Within a few months, it was set to music by Silas Pratt. <clears throat> Do it in the key of A. I've got to drop this down a little bit. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plains. Amen. This next song is, um, the year was 1938, and Kate Smith was looking for something fresh to mark the 20th anniversary of the end of the Great War, what would later be called World War I. Smith had asked Irving Berlin to write her a song. Well, like some of us, he was suffering from composer's block, but Berlin felt an urgency to deliver. He had recently returned from Europe, where... Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler, was growing more powerful and aggressive and seemed to be preparing for war. But Berlin wasn't focused on writing a great America ready to war song. He wanted to create something to celebrate America as a special place to live. Then he remembered a song he drafted years earlier. He pulled it out of an old trunk and dusted off the 20-year-old manuscript. You see, in 1918, Sergeant Irving Berlin was stationed at Camp Upton in Yaphank on Long Island in New York. Berlin was already a successful songwriter, now a draftee, and his commanding officer enlisted him to write a musical review to help raise money for a new building. The result was Yip Yip Yaphank, a lighthearted musical review about an army life featuring music, skits, and military drills. The show produced one of the hits of World War I, Oh, How I Hate to Get Up in the Morning, a comic song about a soldier's reluctance to answer reveille. 
Berlin had written another song for the review, but it cut it out because he thought it was too sappy. So God Bless America waited in that trunk for two decades. Then Kate Smith came calling, and Berlin looked over his early work and rapidly began rewriting and revising, and in less than two weeks, he got it ready for her performance. Thereafter, Smith used it as her closing song on her radio show. And we all love this song. It's probably one of the most requested songs that I get when I'm playing out. <clears throat> While the storm clouds gather far across the sea, let us swear allegiance to a land that's free. Let us all be grateful. I have time for one more song, and I'd like to follow up. This is the end of my program, and um, in doing research on this song, I found it interesting, very interesting. When Woody Guthrie grew tired of hearing Kate Smith sing God Bless America on the radio in the late 1930s, he wrote a song in response and sarcastically called it God Blessed America for Me, before renaming it later This Land is Your Land. The melody was borrowed from a Carter family song. The song was composed on February the 23rd, 1940, and has become the working man's anthem. And I bet Harry knows this song. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me As I went walking that ribbon of highway I saw above me that endless skyway I saw below me that golden valley This land was made for you and me This land is your land, this land is my land From California to the New York Island Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. I roamed and rambled and followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. And all around me a voice was sounding. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. When the sun comes shining and night goes strolling, and the wheat fields waving and the dust clouds rolling, the voice was chanting as the fog was lifting. This land was made for you and me. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land 
land was made for you and me. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. This land was yet made. This land was made for you and me. Thank you, boy, Barb. Thank you, Harry, for having me on today. Really it was a lot of fun. All you folks out there on Facebook, now write a little comment telling Barb how much you appreciate all those songs. Let that, that way, when she goes back and sees it, she can see how much you appreciate her. We appreciate her. Barb McMillan.